and Minister Patricia Venus Henry. Join me every Sunday right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network at 9.30 p.m. for Stepping on the High Waters. Stay tuned because God is turning things around for us in this season. I am Apostle Dion Duncan, uh, along with my wife, Apostle Leah. We are the founding pastors of the soon to be open uh, Bethel House of Worship. And we are really thankful to God because we, we though we've gone through many challenges and trials and circumstances, we are here as evidence that God is good and that God is, you know, his mercy is endures forever. We want to welcome you to our Bible study, our Wednesday night Bible study. And we have affectionately called it preparing for a new season because I don't know if you got the gist, <clears throat> but we are preparing for a new season. We are transitioning. We are in transition out of the old, out of, uh, uh, the old season into a new season and uh, this process that we've been in the Lord instructed us because I've realized that everyone is at some stage of transition in their lives no matter how old you are no matter how experienced you are no matter what uh, 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 walk of life what stage of life what station of life you're in there's always a point in time where the existing season transitions into something new or different or better or or whatever it is whatever it is that god intends for us to to walk into and we 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 are really thankful to each and every one of you who have joined us uh those of you who've joined us from the beginning we want to say thank you for coming those of you this may be your first time we want to say welcome uh you may not be live with us but you're looking at us on youtube in a, in a time to come. Uh, we also want to say welcome. Uh, we're thankful to those of you who have subscribed to our YouTube channel. Uh, we, we, we often see the, uh, the, the views of the videos uh, going up as the week goes on. So it tells us that many of us, even though we can't necessarily make it live, we, we catch it on the replay. And I'm really thankful. And I'm really um grateful to you uh, uh the latest check that we have is there are over 130 subscribers to our youtube channel so i want to say thank you to each and every one of you who have subscribed <clears throat> to our youtube channel it means that uh you are lending your support to this part of the vineyard that apostle lee and myself are trying to uh are following god's instruction to build, amen? Uh, I want to firstly acknowledge God Almighty, who is uh, ruler and king of our lives. We, you know, we, we looked up and all of a sudden we're in the month of December, which means that God has been good. Irrespective of what we saw this year, good, bad, the ugly, we are here, which means that the Lord has been good. And I give him all the honor, I give him all the praise, I give him all the thanks, I give him all of everything that we have, because without him, we are nothing. I want to acknowledge Apostle Leah, who, uh, those of you who were online last week would have known we celebrated a milestone anniversary, 15 years of marriage, and I continue to thank God for her. I, I love this woman with every fiber of my being. And, you know, when I look at what the Lord is doing with our lives, <clears throat> I am grateful that he allowed me to partner with her or her to partner with me or us to partner with each other because we always knew that God had something uh, cooking in our lives. Now the scale of it is just starting to unfold. 
itself. And we are really, really grateful to God for keeping our relationship, for keeping our marriage, uh, for just allowing us to honor him through the commitment that we have to each other. And I think we take that, we take that very seriously. And we continue to thank God because well, there's no magic potion. I wish I could tell you we have all the secrets to, to, to living life as a married couple. We don't. Uh, but we know one thing, that God continues to be the center. And we continue to honor that covenant that we have with each other and with him. Uh, I, I want to say blessings to Darian and Daniel, uh, our boys. May the Lord continue to bless each and every one of you, both of you, sorry, as you continue your endeavors. Uh, the, the academic year is halfway through, and the Lord has kept both of you, and you continue to grow and excel. And that, that promise of growing in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man continues to be your portion in the name of Jesus. We want to thank our parents. I see um, Dr. Linda on the line. Dr. Linda, we want to say we love you. You continue to declare God's grace and mercy and peace over your life as you continue to hold us down, not just in the physical, but in the spiritual. Uh, so we want to say God bless you. We want to say God bless you to Apostle Gemma, uh, who's online, and Apostle uh, Vivian, who they are not just <coughs> our parents, but uh, as you would find out as we get to the launch and the launch day, etc., that they are our spiritual covering. They are the elder statesmen in the kingdom of God who, not just by blood or special dispensation, but through spiritual authority, have laid hands upon us to, uh, to full state to the apostleship. And then, of course, going into this new uh dimension of pastoring and and operating in the uh apostolic uh we want to thank uh the rest of the family uh brother odell is on the line the rest of you my siblings uh uh apostle Leah's siblings <clears throat> our nieces nephews my cousins all of those who who within the family, continue to support us, aunts, uncles, all of you. We want to say God bless each and every one of you uh, uh, because it's really, really, really uh, important for us to tell you that we feel your love. Uh, special greetings to those of you, as I mentioned, who've been logging in from the beginning and maybe it's your first time. You are watching us on Zoom. We want you to take that Zoom link, share it with your friends, share it with your network, share it, share that flyer on social media, share it via WhatsApp, send it, send it via text or email to your families, your friends, so that they could log on and participate in what we have to share tonight. Uh, you're watching me on YouTube. We want you to share. You too, share that link. Put it on all your socials. Uh, uh, text it, WhatsApp it, email it, uh, share it, whatever uh, media through which you share so that others can um, benefit from what is being shared uh, out of this platform. Anybody, if you have been blessed by what we have been sharing thus far, I want you to, to put an amen in the chat, whether you're on YouTube or whether you're on Zoom. If you've been blessed, I want you to, to tell us by, via an amen uh, that you have been blessed. Uh, we've definitely have been blessed. We've been encouraged by seeing the the responses to the uh, Bible study thus far, and we continue to feel encouraged. And man, we can't wait for for those of you who are going to partner with us here within the sanctuary uh, to be part of this to be part of this uh, situation. I must admit, it's the only element that's missing. Having a body of believers in, in physical space with you so that we could fellowship together. Amen. <clears throat> we, last week, we shared or we declared that somebody prayed for me. We declared that somebody prayed for me. A, a realization 
that we got after reading Numbers chapter 14. Anybody remember that? Numbers chapter 14, and we also stole away into Exodus chapter 32. Somebody prayed for me. Uh, we discussed that the Lord was displeased with the reaction of the people of Israel to the news from the spies who came back to share from who came back to share what they saw. And because God was displeased, he was about to execute his judgment in an instant. And Moses prayed uh, and gave there and, and, and sought intervention. So Moses interceded on behalf of the people of Israel and they were able to be spared. Uh, God's mercy was shown to them simply because Moses prayed for them. And it, cause, it causes me, causes you, to look back in our lives and realize all of the times, the incidents, the seasons, the situations where we failed God, where we fell short of the standard that God put in our lives. And were it not for the intercession of our mothers and grandmothers and aunts and uncles and families and siblings and uh, uh, those in the neighborhood or those at church, <clears throat> whatever it is, were it not for those prayers that went up on our behalf, God knows what state or what's, uh, what the, the, the result could have been for our lives. It served also as a reminder that now that we are aware, now that we are aware that we are here today because somebody prayed, we must also pick up the mantle to pray on behalf of others. I, 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 I've told the story before, you know, one time earlier on when I moved to, first moved to New York City, um, I was walking through a subway station and there was an unhoused individual that that's what we call homeless an unhoused individual <clears throat> sleeping in the train station and when i walked past that individual you know there was a real strong pungent odor coming from that individual and i remembered uh blocking my nose because I was like, oh my gosh, I, I can't, you know, the, 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 the odor was so strong. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit tapped me on the shoulder and he said, you know, Dion, were it not for my grace and my glory, and a few uh, 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 moments of quote unquote luck, that could have been you. And I repented. And ever since, so this was over 10 years ago, ever since that day, more than 10 years ago, ever since that day, if I walk past an individual, whether they're unhoused or they look like they're in, you know, dire straits or they look like they're in a dire situation, my mentality is to utter a word of prayer and say, first of all, to say, Lord, thank you, because that could have been me were it not for your glory, were it not for your grace and your mercy upon my life. But I declare a release, a declare deliverance over that person. And we all understand that things like mental illness and, 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 and distress and uh, uh, different circumstances uh, that happen to individuals like that uh, deals with spirits. Some of this is not just random acts of physical things that happen. There's a spirit that will, it, in many circumstances. And I say that to say, whenever I pass or walk past or drive past individuals that appear to be in that situation, I pray. And it's a reminder for us, because we are here because somebody prayed that we must pray for those around us. Don't just pray for, you know, your, for your loved ones. Pray for the nation. Pray for your neighborhood. Pray for your town. Pray for the leaders of your town. Pray for those around you. Pray for 
the, your teacher pray for the students in the school, you have the ability to change the dynamic of people's lives by simply interceding on their behalf in front of God, just like Moses did with the people of Israel. And I want to remind us, even though we are moving on from that topic, don't ever forget that somebody prayed. And your responsibility is to pray for someone else. Amen? I will pray for someone else. That must be our declaration. I will pray for someone else. Don't get so caught up with your needs. And I know sometimes how it is we get caught up with our own circumstances, our own issues, our own situations, our own challenges, our children's challenges, our financial situations, our job situations. But this mandate that God has given us, the believer, is to pray for someone else. What did I say? I must pray for someone else. Anybody who's writing, I want you to write that down. I must pray for someone else. I must pray for someone else. And go back in last week's uh, episode or last week's uh, replay on YouTube and find that if you missed it, if you're hearing me speaking tonight and you are not familiar with the story, the, the, the context of Exodus, of, of number chapter 14 and Exodus chapter 32, go back and, and read it and listen to that uh, recording and you'll get where, I, where, we are go, where we went last week. <coughs> We also learned uh, in Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. That story of the owner of a vineyard and the vineyard dresser and the, the owner of the vineyard who comes by and sees a fig tree and says, hey, this is the third year or three years in a row I came by to look at this fig tree and there's no fruit in it. He said, cut it down. Cut it down. Because as far as the uh, owner of the vineyard's perspective, hey, we waste in dirt, we waste in water, we waste in nutrients. Cut it down, plant another tree, another tree. The dresser or the man who's working the vineyard said, Hold on, give me one more year. Let me fertilize it in the King James Version. He says, Let me dung it. Let me put some dung. Let me put some manure in it. Let me prune it. Let me water it. And let's give it one more year to see if it will bear fruit. If it bears fruit, we're good. If after that it doesn't bear fruit, then cut it off. And it's a reminder of how God mercies, mercy works. Remember, God is God. God is, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We could never under, we could never in our human capacity grasp the magnitude of who God is. However, Luke chapter 13, verses 6 to 9, gives us a sneak as to how God's grace and mercy works. It, and and we, are, we learn that God will show mercy and grace as long as he believes that there will be a return. What does I mean by that? God will show me mercy and grace as long as God believes that there is a chance that I will turn my life around. He called the, the children, the nation of the people of Israel stiff-necked, stiff-necked. He called them stubborn and disobedient. And he gave up on them. He came to exact, to, to exact judgment because he felt like there is nothing else that I could do. I showed mercy after showing mercy after showing mercy. One of the versions said he showed mercy up to 10 times. And they rejected it and they were still disobedient. So God's mercy and his grace will be showered to us and we will enjoy God's mercy and grace as long as our intent, even though change may be long in coming, the intent we really want at our core to change and be different. And eventually God expects that we are going to maximize his mercy and his grace upon our lives. And I told you, when I read Luke chapter 13, it was a, such a sobering uh, passage of scripture to read because I thought about my own life 
And I thought about how many times did I, Dion Duncan, I, Apostle Dion Duncan, exasperate God. And were it not for his mercy and his grace, I wouldn't be standing here today. So we are, I am thankful and I'm grateful. Today we are going to, tonight, we are going to pick up right where we left off last week <clears throat> and complete our journey through Numbers chapter 14. I, I will say, I, we, I hope that we complete our journey through Numbers chapter 14. Uh, one of, the, one of the, the good feelings, I must admit, because we're on a journey together, right? I must admit that it's a really good feeling uh, as we are sharing and ministering in this Bible study that uh, as I'm hearing God and God is unfolding revelation and what you would have a share, uh, there is no, there's no feeling of having to rush through material. Uh, those of you who have who've never ministered before um, may not understand what I mean, but you know, when you minister once in a while here and there, and this is, you feel like you want to make sure and get everything that is apropos to that thought, that revelation, what God wants to share out. But when there is a, you know, God, by God's willing, there is a next week or there's a next time, you feel like you could take your time and you don't have to rush, rush through passages of scriptures. We have spent, what, the last seven weeks, this is the seventh week between Joshua chapter one and Numbers chapter 13, chapter 14. <clears throat> talking about the same ideas, talking about the same instances, but pulling out so much revelation. And it's really refreshing to know that, you know, as God speaks, we could just do it how the Lord speaks. So today we're going to complete or try to complete our journey through Numbers chapter 14. And the title of today's uh, Bible study is uh, Those Promises Are Mine. Those promises are mine. I must admit also I'm having a lot of fun with these titles. Those promises are mine. As the Lord gives, we share it with you. We'll begin reading from verse 20. So as you know, last week we ended at verse 24. But as we journey through the, the, the next set of verses, I want, you, I want us to start reading from verse 20 <clears throat> so that we get the full context. So, tonight, we're going to read from verse 20, and we're reading from the New Living Translation. I know that uh, I, we spent the last six weeks in the NIV, which I love, uh, but we're going to switch it up a little bit tonight, and we're going to read in the New Living Translation. So, just a reminder, from verse 20, as I mentioned in my preamble, Moses the people re rebelled. God showed up. Moses prayed on the people's behalf. And this was the Lord's response to Moses' prayer. Okay? Verse, tw verse 20 of uh, Numbers chap chapter 14. We're going to read from verse 20 to, to verse 30 in this um, segment. Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested. But as surely as I live, and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, not one of those people will ever enter the land. Now, boy, is not some assurance because God is eternal and his glory will always fill this earth. Even after we break it down and he comes back and restores it uh, after Jesus returns. <clears throat> he says that as surely as I live, and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, none of those people, not one of those people will ever enter to that land. And he's talking about all of those who conspired, whether they are the spies, or the assembly who spoke ill against God. Not just ill against God, but they threatened a rebellion. They threatened to backslide. They spoke as though God never did anything to them and they came across as very ungrateful and God was not happy. 
Not one of these people will ever enter the land. They have all seen my glorious presence and miraculous signs. I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness. But again and again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. I just spoke about that in, uh, that we spoke, that we read in Luke chapter 13, verse 69. When we exasperate God, God starts making executive decisions. So he says, uh, but again and again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. They will never see the land I swore to give to their ancestors. None of those who've treated me with contempt will ever see it. But my servant, Caleb, has a different attitude than the others, than the others have. He has remained loyal to me. So I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. Now turn around and don't go on toward the land where the Amalekites and Canaanites live. Tomorrow, you must set out for the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long must I put up with the wicked community and its complaint about me? Yes, I have heard the complaints the Israelites are making against me. Now tell them this, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. Let me repeat that. Now tell them this. This is God telling Moses to tell the, the people of Israel. It sounds like he's repeating himself. But the first few verses we read was God's response to Moses. Now, this is what God is telling Moses to tell the people. Now tell them this. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I, I heard you say. You will all drop dead in this wilderness because you complained against me. Every one of you who is 20 years old or older and was included in the registration will die. And he's talking about the rebellion there. You will not enter and occupy the land I swore to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb of Jephunneh and Joshua, son of Nun. Caleb, son of Jephunneh and Joshua, son of Nun. <clears throat> so he's talking about of the crew of people who are 20 years old and older, only Caleb and Joshua will make it. They are the only two exceptions. Now, as you notice, Aaron and um, Moses were not included in that number, but we spoke about that a couple uh, weeks ago, why Moses could not see the promised land. Now, with these verses, with these verses, we are coming to the end of the first episode of the people of Israel coming to the uh, Jordan. So this is the first instance, the first episode, the first iteration, the first time after the exodus out of Egypt, after the crossing the Red Sea miraculously, after their 40-day sojourn through the wilderness, they are showing up at the banks of the Jordan River for the very first time. These verses are the end of this experience for them. And as we start to see, God's response was clear. Anybody who is 20 years old or older and rebelled against him and against his promises and against the leader who God gave them, none of them will see the promised land. I'm Minister Patricia Venus Henry. Join me every Sunday right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network 
at 9.30 p.m. for stepping on the high waters. Stay tuned because God is turning things around for us in this season.